Who Among Us has not seen the films out there? Despite its inner historical inaccuracies, it still holds up as a great film. This is a tribute to one of the men that defended Rourke's Drift and a journey to his final resting place. Joseph Bromwich was born on the 18th of November 1856 at Saltisford Rock, St Mary's in Warwick. He was the fifth son of six in a family of nine children born to Joseph Bromwich, a journeyman painter and his second wife, Maria Kite, of Milverton, Warwickshire. His brother Charles was born in June 1840, followed by the birth of three girls between 1841 and 1846. And when they moved to Saltisford Rock, Joseph and three other boys were born between 1852 and 1858. Charles joined the 24th Regiment in 1859, which at the time had its depot in Whaley in Birmingham. And by 1861, the family had moved to Hadley's Yard, St Mary's, Warwick. Joseph Sr. died in the spring of 1875 and Joseph left his job as a porter to join the 28th Infantry Brigade on the 29th of August 1877. He was described as five feet, five and a half inches tall, a fair complexion, brown eyes and dark hair, inch chest measurement and his religion was Church of England. 1028, Private Bromwich was transferred to the 2nd Battalion, 24th Regiment, on the 31st of January 1878 and he was given a new service number 1524. He received orders for active service in South Africa in February 1878 where he took part in the Cape Frontier War. During the early war he and his brother Charles were present during the defence of Rourke's Drift January 22nd until the 23rd. Around 150 soldiers defended the post holding off between three and four thousand Zulu. Joseph was later transferred to A Company on the 29th of January 1879 to replace men of that unit who had been wiped out in Isandwana. For his service he received the South African Medal with 1877, 1878 and 1879 clasp. He served at Gibraltar and while serving in India he was granted good conduct pay, gained a fourth class certificate of education and by 1882 he had earned two good conduct badges. In April 1882 he was admitted to hospital with chronic hepatitis and an abscess on the liver and in May of that year he was shipped back to Netherley Hospital where he was found to be suffering from a chronically damaged liver with a liability for it to recur in hot climate. His condition was just not to be the result of intemperance or misconduct but of climate and military service. Cub would consider the condition to be permanent and would for some 12 months impair Joseph's ability to earn a living. He was declared medically unfit for further service and invalided out of the army on 25th of July 1882 with a pension of 7 pence a day for 12 months which was later changed to a permanent pension. Joseph returned to the home of his widowed mother at 12 Brook Street, Salford, Warwickshire. He met Betsy Fellows Davis and they married at the parish church on the 22nd of April 1883. By 1891, Joseph and Betsy had moved to 183 Darwin Street in the parish of St Albans, Aston in Birmingham, where they established a boot and shoe repairing company. They eventually moved to 14 Asylum Road, St Stephen's, Selly Oak, Birmingham, where Joseph took employment as a shoe repairer. The 1901 census shows them having a 15-year-old daughter named Alina, who had been born in Birmingham. Then they moved to 5 Duke Street, Bilston, in Staffordshire, the place where Betsy was born and Joseph continued to work as a boot and shoe repairer. Betsy died in 1914 and by the end of the year Joseph's health was in decline. He was diagnosed to be suffering with cancer of the tongue. In early 1916 he was admitted to the workhouse infirmary at Heath Town, Wolverhampton, where he spent his last days awaiting the end. He died on 25th of February 1916, aged 60. As the Great War was raging in Europe, he was buried with a private family ceremony in an unmarked grave in Bilston Cemetery, Wolverhampton. Section D, Plot 55. His South African medal was sold at auction in 2016. And from the publicity, a new headstone memorial was erected at his grave a few months later. The dedication was attended by the Mayor of Wolverhampton, the Mayor of Warwick and a representative of the 1st Battalion of the Royal Welsh Fusiliers. Although his actions were described as being not exceptional, 
I think we can all agree that the actions of all men were in fact exceptional. That their names may be forgotten, their monuments crumble away, their deeds live on.